up people what is crack cracking inspiration away here back with another video and to be more precise another or well, the next episode should I say of uh, my MMA series no skill to skill uh, there is a reason I've sat on the floor because I've got my jiu-jitsu we call it a bob we got bob here my makeshift partner for today because I'm going to talk a bit about um, jiu-jitsu and some common um, Translations you will see, um, and uh, escapes, um, and some common rare uh, chokes and arm bars. Um, there is other stuff I could show you, but I'm not going to go, I don't want to make this video too long, so I'm going to show you three of my, or three techniques of arm bars you could do, three um, head chokes, um, and three common translations you'll see, or escapes. Um, there was a fourth head one I was going to show, which was standing in the scene. That's a bit hard to do with this, because um, this isn't the most stable, so I thought I'd keep this on the floor and show you some floor-based stuff, because so, Jiu-Jitsu is pretty much basically floor defence. Although, like I said, there is Judo included when you do the classes, and there is uh, obviously some standing techniques you can do. But for now, we keep it simple and we keep it on the floor. As I always say in these videos, do not copy, my, um, copy me. I am not an expert, I am just someone who trains in um, MMA. Jiu Jitsu um, and wanted to do a series on it because it's a very big passion of mine. So, yeah, but do not copy me. If you're going to do Jiu Jitsu, especially Jiu Jitsu, because I've had my arm pop and that's from training, that's how serious it could be, um, you will get injured. Same kickboxing, but especially with Jiu Jitsu. If you try and do this without proper training, you will get hurt. And you can still get hurt in training because, like I said, I've spar been rolling about on my arm. Um, bubble my partner not now obviously because we're back to strict rules and dummies but when I did I've been knocked to arm bar being stubborn and didn't want to tap out so you can't escape arm bars sometimes um depending on how good you are and my arm popped luckily me it wasn't anything serious but that's what I mean so do not train and um, so before I show you some demos I just want to go talk about a little detail a little three things um that is very common in jiu-jitsu that I think is very wise to talk about so there's three main things to do with Jiu Jitsu that is very common. Um, so let's talk about the first one. Patience. It is a very tough sport. Um, there is a lot of transitions you can do and a lot of defense moves and a lot of offense. It's a very 50-50 game because as soon as you could escape as soon as you escape their move, say an iron bar head choke, they could get into another position. Um, and as you're escaping a move, you can lock them into a submission. I've done it myself, I've escaped the move, um, they've been standing up and I've tracked the arm and had them in a standing arm bar. Couldn't submit them because it wasn't locked in deep enough. Same when they've tried, they've escaped something, I've locked in a head choke. Uh, it's just one of those things, 50-50, so you've got to have the patience. It's not about, you know, outpowering your, per, uh, your opponent because that's the one thing I've learned the hard way. I went into Jiu Jitsu thinking, right, I can outpower my opponent here, and I've had people that my partner sadly isn't, doesn't weigh nowhere near as much as me, has outsmarted me, used better techniques, and escaped my submissions and tapped me out those times. I'm not ashamed to say that, it is what it is. It's, you know, don't go to Jiu Jitsu thinking it's all about a power game. Power has nothing to do with Jiu Jitsu. I've been against guys who are bigger than me and still escaped from their submissions. I've had guys that are smaller than me and they've escaped my submissions. It is not about power. It's about the patience. You've got to have the patience to when, which comes into the other two things, to do the technique because it is a very technique based sport. Um, yes, kickboxing is and boxing is, but you can kind of use power in those as well to get a bit of luck. With Jiu Jitsu, it is very much technique um, and there's very small details you've got to remember and stuff like that. Um, same, and that ties into the timing. It's all about timing as well. You've got to time when you go for a submission. When you don't go for submission, when you block, when you play defense, when you play offense. For example, you could be on the floor, I could be that. So, say I was this dummy now, I could be there and someone be on top of me, and I could literally stay on the floor and play defense. That's not me being a pussy or not, you know, trying to beat them. Sometimes, when you're on the ground like that, flat on your back, it is better to play defense until you find the right timing to advance into a different or better position um, or do a better, better technique now. So that's the main things I say about jiu-jitsu as well. It's patience, technique, and timing. All those three things. Um, it does take some that takes a while to learn, but you know it is something you learn eventually over time. So let's start with the arm bars. 
I'm not going to go around you getting some because there's plenty of ways you can get an arm bar. Like I said, I've done standing arm bars. You can do side ones. Um, but basically, I can do a no gi style as well, even though you can do gi, but I'm doing no gi. But so essentially, you have the single arm bar, which is where you grab the arm like that. If you was in gi, you would grab your shoulder, or you, you know. If you was in gi, you would grab their collar. This bit here so and then now obviously they would see it coming so they would defend they'd either grip their hands like that and that's when you've got to just yank it or they'd have their foot so you've got the single single is where you put your knee and that's when it's close right it's a single arm bar it's essentially you have your foot right in their leg in their chest here that stops them moving you have the arm like I said no gi you grab your shoulder gi you grab their chest this wrist bit here and you put the leg over their head so you'd have to tend my their hands there and then that's when you go back obviously if I was in the cage it'd be more of a yank it back so they feel it straight away if it's with a partner, you slowly go back. You still put a bit of force in it, but you wouldn't just yank it back. And then you squeeze the legs. You see how my legs are loose? You squeeze the leg. And you see this? Arm straight. So you squeeze leg, arm straight. And you make sure their thumb is facing, I believe, it's up. The thumb's on angle, it doesn't hurt as much. Now, am I correct? I can't remember. I'm trying to think. I think, don't take my word for it, but I think it's their thumb is on an angle, it hurts more. But that's basically a single. And then you have the double, which is basically, instead of the foot being here on their uh, ribs, stomach area, you put it over their stomach area. So you're essentially sitting on them. And it, but it's the same, con it's the same concept. You'd have the arm, make sure their thumb is on an angle or straight, I can't remember which one it is, but it needs to be on a certain way for it to actually be effective. You go back, squeeze the legs together, and boom! There, in an arm bar. Now, so that's two common ones you normally see, but there is a. I'd be here, then an odd. Switch the legs. And then, uh, you need to see this bit, can't this bit. As you can see, I'm kind of sat on him, like a triangle. So, sat on him, like a triangle. And then that's probably where they would push you, start pushing you off. So as they're pushing you off, you grab their leg, lean, and then, as they're pushing you, you lean to the side, grab their leg with one arm, and then boom, straight back. And that's another arm bar. Like I said, do not copy me. I am not an expert. I'm just showing you kind of techniques that I like to do and are useful. So now we're going to chokes. You've got your rear choke. So we need to get Bob here. Oh, he's getting a bit naked here. He's <laughs> getting a bit naked for you guys. Well, hi! No, I'm joking. So pretend this is my partner get him in the crucifix you lock your legs I can't lock my legs around his legs but essentially you lock your legs around there and then your arm under I'm trying to think now so you got to pretend someone's head's here I can't really do it but you pretend someone's head here and then you just literally fall back stretch them out and then yeah what can I have that kind of thing that's the rear one Front one. Oh, he's lost his legs. <laughs> That's why I said I ain't doing any standing techniques. So, essentially, your standing one is yeah, look your legs around them, and you'd have the head. You can't see from there, so I'll do it this way. You'd have your head there, and then you just kind of squeeze with the arm, and then boom. Very good. Sneaky one I like to do. Uh, third one. 
This is a sneaky one. But it's one of the ones, one of my personal favourites. Because it's so sneaky. It's less common. Because, to be honest, I've barely seen anyone use this in sparring. Apart from me. There may be some people have, I don't know. But I've certainly used it. I certainly like to use it. Let's put it that way. You have to pretend here. Pretend I've got his head. So. His head's here. So. I've got his head. And I essentially, like that. Very sneaky. Because obviously, if I'm in a fight, no one's going to expect me to lie on my on my stomach like this. They expect me to translate to the side or translate to, uh, into a side control. And you basically have the head so you squeeze this arm, put your head to the floor, by the chest, arm down, and then you kind of stand on your feet, squeeze. So again, head down, put my arm here, use the feet to kind of prepare myself. And then I squeeze, ease, use the arm to squeeze them. And that's a little sneaky, rear head, uh, sneaky little north choke I like to do. Not very common, not a lot of people do that, but you know. So I'll show you a few translations now that you would see. There is tons more I could show you, but I'm not going to because I don't want to make it a too long video. This is just some common techniques you'll see, some you won't, some that I enjoy doing, some that are very easy to pull off. I say that, but yeah, they're not easy, but you know what I mean. So, very common one you would see in Jiu Jitsu is knee on belly. You can't see my face, but you put your knee on that belly like that, and then you see my other legs kind of stretched out here. I can't stretch it too far because I've got more weights by me, but that's a knee on belly, and then you can do the same on the other side. But it's just simple, you just not hit the fucking table on the way. <laughs> switch his leg. See what I mean? And then you just switch leg. And that's in the on belly. Uh, next one. If I was in this guard, you know. Oh, I'm in this guard. Pretend I'm in this guard. Your dad's legs wrapped. And what you do to get out of the guard is you put one foot back, kind of knee them in the butt. And then you kind of make sure you stood up tall and you spread your legs like that. So, so you can see my feet. I've still got feet on angle. And essentially that would open them up. And that's when you'd have a leg. So you'd have a leg. You'd put your foot on their leg to trap their leg. And that's when you'd move to side control them. So in essence, you are using your legs to push their legs open. So they'll have their legs on you. Like that. Yeah. Knee out. But stand tall. Spread your leg. So that eventually loosen their leg. And then you put your knee on their leg. Slide it past. And then get into side control. That's another common. Uh. Common uh, little thing you will see of people using in Jiu Jitsu to get out of full guard and then these are two that you will see people do to get out of um, when you're in full on the full guard so that's when the bottom when you're on the bottom this is from the top so that's bear with me now because um, this is hard to do by myself especially this kind of showing what I'm showing you oh yeah you can see me so I'd have my partner on here. Obviously, he wouldn't be, he'd be standing up. And then what you do, is you put your arms by their belly. You stop, behave. You put your arms by their belly, because if you put your arms here, they can grab you and knock you in an arm bar or all sorts. I know it's not the best angle, I apologise, but I'm doing this by myself. So you put your hands by their belly, and then you kind of hip thrust them off. And as you hip thrust in, you hip thrust. Hip, hip. As you. Ah. Yeah. As you're hip thrusting up, that's when you turn. 
and throw them to the side. And that's that. And then the second one, which I don't need to dump me forth, is, but this one's a bit more risky in my opinion. So they might be too they might be too strong to do the you they might be on top of you and they might be too strong. So you can't do the hip bro. I've done it many times where they've got their legs locked in on you and you just can't get the hit of rope to go. Um second one is to just from how? It's like uh I can't remember hip escape. So you can't, you know, hip thrust them off. That's the wrong hand position, your hands would be here. Because like I said, if you leave your hands there when you're hip thrusting there, grab your arms. I've had it plenty of times. When they're here, obviously you push off the hip and they can't get your arms. If that don't work, you just basically side control. So yeah. One lap more time. So yeah, you've tried to hip throw, oh it's not working, they're too heavy, or they got a technique locked in. Yeah. Hip escape. And as you can see it's called hip escape because I move to my hips and I'm on my side. Again, dangerous because they can get you with a rear naked choke from there. There's all sorts. Like I said, there's a 50 50 sport jiu jitsu. And there we go. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, sorry, it's probably not the best angles, but I try my hardest. You know, I'm recording this by myself as I always do. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, next couple of MMA, MMA episodes will be me sitting down and talking, I'm afraid. Um, I've done a lot of videos on demonstrations now, so, you know, I've got to throw a few videos in there sitting down. I think next one's about what I do when I lose or have lost. Um, but it'd be stuff like that. And then it's not long until this episode finish, this series finishes, so I'm afraid. Bit of a girl, but there it is. Um, keep an eye on the channel because it's of October. I will be dropping my full Angel in Heaven song. Um, yeah, and make sure to check out next week because we get the next MMA video and the next uh, you'll get Drunk Twister as well. So, I've been Inspiration. I hope you've enjoyed that. Hope that gives you an insight to Jiu Jitsu. It's a very technical techno sport, one of the most technical sports out there, I think, um, and also most one of the most hardest to learn because there's so many little things you've got to remember. Um, but yeah, I've been Inspiration 8. I will catch you later. Cheers. Bye.